thought I'd give you a few more examples of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So here we go. We got the background, which is straight from your book. The fundamental theorem of algebra was introduced by Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss. And basically it says, like we've discussed in class, if you have an nth degree, there are n complex zeros, which means there's n complex factors, and we can always write it out. So if n is 5, you have 5 complex factors. If n is 3, you have 3 complex factors, or 3 zeros. So let's go ahead and look at how we can actually get to use this information. So here's a problem that we can use as an example. So here's just by the third degree polynomial function, f of x has exactly three zeros. So we need to find all three zeros. So we'll go ahead and we'll take and we'll look at this and we'll try and factor what we can. I can see that I can factor out an x to start with, giving x squared plus four. And if I have x squared plus four, I can see that I have one of the zeros. Now I just gotta find the other one. This is a lot like the one we did in class. So I know that x squared plus 4 must equal 0. I'm going to solve that. And we get the square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus 2i. So I do, in fact, have all the zeros. The zeros are 0 for this first term. And then I have plus 2i and the minus 2i. And that's a third degree. So since how we have a third degree, we have three zeros. And you could write the complex factors of this. Uh, factorization would be f of x. The factorization would be Complex fra uh, factors. If we have all real, we have all real coefficients. Then we have complex conjugates as factors. They come in pairs. That also works for con uh, what do you call it? Irrational factors. The, it, you have rational fact, uh, coefficients, then your irrationals must also come in pairs as conjugates. So let's take a look at another one, find all the zeros of this. Now we have a fifth degree, so we need five zeros. So if we have five zeros we're looking for, I'm gonna have to first graph this. So we'll take a look at the graph. We'll have this graph, we'll take it, and let's take a look. Let's graph it right in. This is the one from class, let's clear this. So we're going to graph x to the fifth, x to the fifth plus, oops, plus x to the third plus 2x squared minus 12x. plus 8. And I'm going to start looking. Uh, first of all, I'm, and, and now I'm going to think about what this looks like, and I can kind of see a little of it here. But it is a fifth degree, so it has a cubic-like shape where the, lead, where the end behavior is the opposites, and we're going third quadrant is getting uh, towards negative infinity, and first quadrant is going towards positive infinity. And we'll look at this. I'm going to look at the standard window, so I hit zoom 6 to give me negative 10 to 10 and take a look at what I have here. Oh, I'm looking at a multiple root look like here, and I have, I don't know whether this probably is a rational root because there's nothing else to go, it's because this is going to go down forever here and up forever here. So as I take a look at these, I'm going to guess, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to take my window and I'm going to look closer in on x, I'm going to look at negative 5 to 5 negative 5 to 
5. I'm still going to count by 1s because that gives me a good idea of what I'm looking at. And as I look at negative 5 to 5, I can see this graph comes up, comes down and touches and goes up. I don't know if that's at a whole number or not, but here I have a nice one I can factor out. That looks like it's at negative 2. Let's go ahead and test that. I'm going to look at second, calculate, 0, left bound I'm going to put negative 3, right bound I'm going to put negative 1, and I'm going to guess it's at negative 2, and I get purely at negative 2 here. So that's definitely one of my factors. So let's go ahead and graph that, or solve for that, and at least I'll have it down to a uh, fourth degree. I can look at this later. So let's go ahead and take that, and we're going to divide by negative 2, synthetically divide by negative 2. So we'll take a look here. Negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. fourth degree right here. Fourth degree. So we'll go ahead now and go back to the graph. Looking at this graph, I see other zeros there. Let's see if they look like they are rational or irrational. It looks like a multiple zero, so we might be able to divide by more. But if I go from zero to three and look for that, so I can calculate zero, left bound zero, right bound one, two, no, maybe three. No, that's two. Two, and we're going to guess at one. And we find out that truly it is at one. Didn't look like it on the graph, but it looks like it is here. We're going to go ahead and test zero of one. It's got to be an even root because of the way it's coming in, an even multiplicity because it comes in and touches and goes back up. So let's go ahead and divide by one. And that should be easy because we already have the fourth degree right there ready to divide by. So I'm just going to continue on Oops. and divide by 1. Bring the 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1. That's negative 1. Negative 1. That gives us 4. 4 plus times 1 is 4. Negative 4. Negative 4 gives me 0. Uh, I'm down to a third degree. But it was a multiple root, so I'm going to do it one more time. And I'm going to start right here because this is my third degree. Third degree. So now there's one more. One. One times one is one. Zero. I love it when I get zeros for third degree. One times zero is zero. Bring down the four. Four times one is four. Four plus one is four is zero. I get my quadratic is x plus four. We've seen that one before. x squared plus four. My x squared plus four. So I have the following factorization linear factorization with both zero. So first of all, I'm going to write this as x plus 2, x minus 1 squared, because there's two of them, and then x squared plus 4 from this part right here. From this part, I get the red part there. Now, that's not a linear. It wants all the linear factors. This is still a quadratic. We have to factor that one more time. So I'm going to find the zeros. Don't remember this from before. I need to know where does x squared plus 4 equal 0. I'll get the zeros over x factors. So that's x squared equals negative 4. x equals plus or minus 2i. I get the square root of both sides. So my linear factorization will be x plus 2, x minus 1 squared, x minus 2. 
2i is x plus 2i. And my zeros are negative 2, 1, plus and minus 2i. And I've answered the question. So take a minute if you need to pause and look at that. We're going to move on and look at the next one. So here we have complex conjugates. I already mentioned that. If you have real coefficients, then you're going to have a pair in the end. We saw that here, where we have the pair. We have to make sure we know that pair. So they made it easy to find it because they come in pairs because we have real coefficients. Moving on, we have the fourth degree polynomial. They want us to just write one, a fourth degree polynomial with real coefficients. One, two, three. It's a fourth degree, and I only have three that I need to go ahead and make a fourth zero to make this work. And if I want real coefficients here, then I need to have a complex conjugate for 3i, which is negative 3i. So the zeros I'm going to use are going to be zeros at negative 1, negative 1, and 3i. If you wanted to look at the graph of that, you could see how that graphs out to be exactly what we want it to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem. Actually, I think I'm going to live at that. That's two good problems for you to look at. I would try them. Look through and try some more like these. Writing complex conjugates and solving fifth degrees or fourth degrees using all the steps you saw me use. Have a nice night and see you tomorrow.